I'm going to be drawing again today. Uh, my internet's down and I am feeling a bit uninspired. So I thought I'd record and try and draw slash paint something. So let's talk about something. I've been trying to read Meditations by Marcus Aurelius, which is, if you haven't heard about it, it's a but some people call it like the 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 greatest book for getting into Stoicism, which is an old Greek slash Roman philosophy of living your best life of every day as if it was your last. And I'm really liking it. It's set out as a well, it's not set out. It's actually just a bunch of meditations of thoughts from Marcus Aurelius, which is, was an emperor and a philosopher in Rome. And he never meant it to be published. Never meant it to be made public, so it all seems very personal. And so, very interesting, because you're seeing an author, or a philosopher, an emperor, talk to himself about his own flaws. When he refers to in the book an abstract you, he's not actually talking to any other reader but himself. So it's really interesting to see into the mind of an emperor, of a philosopher, in that kind of hyper-personal way. The book is, it's, you have to, because it's set out in a, it's basically paragraphs or short sentences or thoughts written out by the author and they're very charged with meaning and thought because of that. So you ha I try to take my time when reading them and it's difficult because you might, your mind wanders so you start thinking about other things and you'll miss, you'll, you'll read automatically or at least I will read automatically and I'll not absorb the meaning that it's trying to get. Which is a good thing, you want a, you want a book charged with, with meaning and you want it to be thought thought-provoking, but it's also difficult to, you know, read casually. It's, it, it's an exercise more than a relaxation, which again, is not a bad thing, it's just different kind of uh, experience. I've also, you know, I've been making these videos about poetry, which hopefully by the time this is out, should have been the third one, should be out. And I've been very proud of those videos. I've been putting a lot of thought, a lot of yeah, passion into them. I've been yeah, putting more effort into the whole process behind them than I usually have before. And they are unscripted. As I mean, I don't think about what I'm going to say because I do choose the poem beforehand that I'm going to talk about. But it's um, it's been quite emotional, actually, because as they're my poems and they're very personal to me and they remind me of times when I wrote them before. They are uh, hit hard and it's interesting to try and discover the meaning behind some of them. Because sometimes it hits very true. It, when, I, when I feel that I've gotten them correct. Also, I mean, going through a lot of older photos that I've been taking, because I, I do like photography, I like taking photographs. Um, as an artist, a way of, you know, artistic expression. I'm not particularly good at them, but, you know, I try my best. And I, I always kind of put that to the side, even though I do like doing it. I'm not very good at sitting down and, you know, looking at the final project, because it's very easy to go around and take photographs. No, it is. Maybe it's difficult to take good ones, but it, then, for whatever reason, the process of sitting down, selecting, and going through and tweaking to try and, you know, get the essence of what you wanted to, you know, snap with a photograph, it's, it's a process that I've found always quite difficult. So, but I, I started doing that uh, yesterday. I guess I sat down and I went through the photographs and I started using Lightroom, which is a, 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 because I use Photoshop a lot, and the plan, the Adobe plan, which I subscribe to, 
uh, includes Lightroom as well. And I've kind of never really used it, but I thought I'd give it a try. And it's, I mean, it is amazing, like Photoshop. Though Photoshop is, of course, more, from what my understanding, I do understand a lot more about Photoshop than Lightroom, but it is just so much Photoshop. And Lightroom seems fantastically made for a photographer when you're dealing with hundreds of photographs and it's it's made for ease of use and it's fantastic and I'm enjoying that. It's been interesting because I've I, I've never studied or I've never, you know, taken the time to learn Lightroom. So I'm just kind of learning through doing I might look up stuff eventually if I wanna if I end up, you know, wanting to learn more. But for now it's been really interesting to kind of go through and learn through trial and error. It's kind of got to me interested again because I, yeah, I have a Instagram account where I put up art and I put up photographs and I put up, put up some of my poetry. It's kind of put up artsy stuff, and I never really, I'm not a big fan of promoting stuff like that because my intention was never to, you know, have a popular Instagram account with it. It was just kind of a place to put up my stuff, and both as a way to store it and as a way to think about how someone from the outside might look at my projects. It's also, the way I structured it is that every post I would number so that I wouldn't ever be able to delete one because each one's numbered in sequence. So if I deleted one, you'd be able to tell where the skip and sequence was. That doesn't mean I can delete them, but I wouldn't go back and switch all the numbers because that would be a lot of work, and because it would probably ruin the intent of doing so. And doing so, I have put up stuff that now looking back is like, mm, you know, it's not very good. But, that's part of the learning progress. I'm not ashamed of having done so. Because, you know, I can look back and understand why I put them up. Often it was me testing and I just discovered Photoshop, for example, with some of them. So there's really heavy, heavily edited, two saturated photographs up on that. But, you know, you learn, and I learned. So, I, I might put that in the description, so if anyone's interested, they can check that out. But, I, I went far, I, I disappeared from the conversation, but, I... Doing these photographs, editing, going through these photographs has given me stuff that I'd like to upload, so I've started uploading again. So that's quite exciting to me. And as I, I was saying before, it's kind of, it's forced me to kind of look at how someone would see my work. And often, I, you know, I don't do a very good job of it, so it makes me rethink and learn. Which is, you know, what I try to do. Yeah, I'll put that below. Which will be because of what's happening, of course, these days. And being stuck inside, I'm actually finding a lot of things to do. Which is funny, because in my current situation, I've been stuck inside a lot anyhow. Maybe it was just a combination of, you know, time. Or maybe it was just a matter of time. But, you know, maybe it's not. Maybe this whole pandemic that's occurring help me get a bit inspired. Who knows? Yeah, so... I'm not the greatest watercolour painter. I like it. it watercolour can be beautiful. So, I'm gonna, you know, try. I'm always very... because I, I often paint with more... solid colours, or more solid measures. I'll paint with a pencil and I'll, which, you know, I would say is a bit more solid. And acrylic paint, which is, you know, it's easy on mistakes because you can paint over it. Watercolour, on the other hand, it's surprisingly, for being such a delicate kind of paint, it's incredibly fast drying and therefore the painter has to be quite fast in painting. I've actually missed a step, or one of my own personal steps, which would be to kind of wet the canvas a bit. So I'm going to try and fix that a bit. But 
often, and also because of the nature of how fast it dries, and because it's water-based, you don't want to paint over it too much because you'll get a wet smudge and all the colours will mix badly and it'll become grey and brown and nasty colours. So you don't, you don't want that to happen. Just going to check the camera if it's still rolling. It is indeed. There have been occasions where I've tried to record and the camera has gone off and I've been quite upset because you lose that natural kind of flow. And from there, I'm going to add a bit of ink. Oh no, it's all dried out. Well, I've got some more. Oh, it's gone over over. I can, it's not gone on my clothes. I can... Now I can clean the floor. Can't clean my clothes from ink. That well. Oop, that's a dog barking. Made a mess. I've made a bloody mess. And you say thin brush. The camera did go out. I'm not sure what I was saying, but I will continue what I was saying. I'm never too sure I'm never too sure what steps to take when it comes to adding ink to watercolor because you want a melding of color and black, but you don't want too much black. You don't want too much color. You don't want it to be no, empty looking, unless that's your intention. I do like airy paintings, I do like minimalism in what I add, but you don't want it to look like unfinished, you want to look purposeful. You meant the emptiness to be there, you meant for it to look un but, you know, unfinished in a way. Also, it's quite challenging painting like this, you know, balancing all the axe, the ink, wanting to kind of go its own way, follow the flow of gravity and of the water you've laid out, which is good. You want you want challenge and you want you know different elements acting out in a painting together. When there's a rise, when it starts to look a bit messy. You see, here I might have an issue. I might have added too much water, it might dry it out a bit, and you can't really see much of a shape there. I'm gonna add some more watercolors, a bit drier. I always, um, I know a lot of people who, or I've known a lot of people who have always kind of wanted to get into art or are into art, but they've always, you know, kind of been a bit downtrodden on it, either personally or by exterior influence. You know, it's always depressing to hear about art teachers in the past or present that have told people, you know, you're no good at this. Because there's a kind of attitude towards art that I disagree with, which is the one of, you know, you either have the talent or you don't. And I refuse to believe that. I know it, that's not the case, because I'm quite talentless when it comes to a lot of things. I've just, you know, kind of, I'm not saying that now I'm good at them, I just kind of didn't care. In a lot of ways, it kind of was an escape. And 
And that is, it's also still depressing when you hear that about young kids as well. You, and a ten-year-old who's been told, yeah, you don't, you, know, you don't do art. And that's pathetic. It's pathetic to hear that from an art teacher of all people, just any adult. It's, it's often just like bitterness. But yeah, I think what I'm trying to get to is that if you want to try out painting or anything creative, whether it's learning an instrument or writing poetry, if you want, don't be dissuaded from it. You're not going to be very good at the beginning unless you're... I don't know if you can hear that, but my dogs are barking. They're being taken out for a walk. So, that, that, well, that's why. But, you know, if you want to do something creative, don't be dissuaded from it. You might not, as I was saying, you might not be very good at the beginning, but no one is. People learn if they want to learn. They don't become experts because they want to become experts. What I'm trying to say is, you know, everyone's bad at the beginning, I'm not very good at saying that. I try to be more interesting than I actually am. Okay, I've kind of muddled my yellow enough so that it's no longer yellow. It kind of looks like green, but I need some yellow for the flower. Mm, that's not very clear, is it? Maybe I'll make it a bit orange. There we are. Bit orange, I said. Hmm. Okay. I might try out something a bit crazier. It might not look very good, but I'm going to try. I'm going to clean this quickly. I'm try and add like hues. Should have done that a bit more at the beginning. But here goes. Because if I do that now, I might be able to get some of those colours into, you know, the rest while giving it an atmosphere. And also wetting the canvas a bit. Which might allow me to add the ink with a more desirable effect. I don't want to cover the whole canvas in a hue because the white is its own beauty. Okay, I think that's enough. That's just like enough before I start fucking it up. Okay, here is where I'm kind of letting my imagination fly a bit. Where you could say it becomes a bit more experimental, and by that I mean I'm just throwing stuff on the canvas and seeing if it sticks. In this case, almost literally. Yeah, this is becoming quite muddled. I'm trying to think how I can kind of reinforce the subject, which is hopefully the flower. 
Maybe the key is muddle everything except the flower and hope that that draws the eye. Tell me, I don't know, tell me something, but uh, if you've gotten this far into the video. I'm quite happy with the state of my channel right now, because I feel you know, productive. I'm creating stuff that I enjoy, that I enjoy making at least. Hopefully, that I would enjoy. I'm a bit of a fucking hipster. Hipster. But, you know, I am what I am. I make what I enjoy. Now, I'm quite happy with the state of the channel because I'm, I'm glad with what I'm, I'm uploading and I'm uploading stuff that I enjoy. I'm not disappointed too greatly with anything I've uploaded before, you know, it's kind of, I'm happy with what I'm doing. And sure, audience interaction isn't the highest. People don't often watch as far into the videos as they are, you know. But that's fine. I'm not doing this necessarily for anyone else. It's an added, very pleasant bonus if people can get something out of my videos out of my art, in any medium, but it's not the, you know, it's not the, the reason why I'm making them, I'm not trying to, I don't know what I'm not trying to do, I'm happy making these, and I'm content in these kind of different artistic avenues I'm trying to explore, so I don't think I need much more of a reason than that to keep going. Now, if there's something that I've hinted at, something that I've made before that you've enjoyed better, let me know, because everything that I've made so far has me quite content. It isn't anything that I wouldn't necessarily afford to make it. And as I've said, if people can get something out of it, that's a great positive. And if I can see how people react to my art, that is a way to improve. So responses are always encouraged. Do you want more videos of me talking and painting, talking and drawing? prefer more, you know, intimate one-on-one -on -one conversations with the camera. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. So let me know. If you care enough. Otherwise, okay, you have no reason to. But it'd be cool. It'd be pretty cool. No, um... I think I... The structure's a bit weak on this. I didn't really plan for much of this. I don't think I'm going to touch it much more because I might only just make it worse. Or I don't have any idea how I can make it better. So I might come back to that later. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching my video. And, you know... Take care.